let us see how a motor work. To understand the kind of motor in a Tesla, for instance, we must start from the basics. Two magnets, each one provide its own magnetic field. A magnet is made of a positive and a negative end, which are also called poles. When you try and face a positive end with another positive end, they repulse each other. Now, how is a magnetic field created around a magnet? This is the magical part, since both negative and positive pole are forced to live off the same part. An invisible force appears all around the part. Let us see how a motor work. Here I will be using what you can call a rotating plate. As well as four magnets. I have four of them. One over here, one over here, and one over here. I just don't want don't want to stick them together yet. First of all, you need to figure out which pole is the positive one and the negative one on each magnet. Now, the easiest way to do that is, as you can see, I taped both ends of the magnet. Then I'm going to try to figure out which end will uh, try to attract this one or repulse it. So. Luckily, the table is made of steel, so that helps a lot. When I try to uh, approach this side of the magnet to the other one, it's trying to repulse. So I know that this end, uh, as well as this one, are both the, the same. Now, as you can see, green with green, is going to try and repulse right, green and green doesn't like each other now I attached each magnet on the face that I want to be um, and at least I know which one it is so the green and the green are now well fixed duct taped to the plate and this is a third magnet using the same method I figured out that this is the same pole as the other ones meaning it's the same either positive or negative I don't know but all I know is it facing this position they are all the same and as we know with magnets same poles don't like each other they repulse each other I attached the last magnet to a stick, a spoon, but in this case a st stick. I clearly know which side it is which. And now I can simulate exactly what a motor, how a motor work. So say this plate is the rotor and what is in my hand is the stator. I can play with it in order to make it go faster, kind of like this. If I use the negative side or the pink side over here, I, I don't exactly know if it's the negative one, but it's the opposite one. I can try and slow down the plate.
see over there like this. So now I'm slowing the, the plate and you know, I'm not trying to touch it, just the opposite side is trying to attract a magnet and it slows down. When two identical poles of a magnet meet, they don't want to connect. In a magical invisible world, they are fighting and repulsing each other according to each respective magnetic field. They react and move from one another. The key point here is you need two magnetic fields to interact between each other to create movement. Magnet like this could be used at some point if bigger, a lot bigger, to drive a Tesla. But they probably are not the best setup since as you can see both the starter and the rotor which I am simulating over here are moving and that is difficult to do in reality you need one of both to be fixed still and in order for the other one to move so you notice how I'm kind of alternating I'm, I'm doing an alternate movement kind of exactly like how an say alternate current would work you can see how the way to make it faster is to alternate the movement of this magnetic field at the precise mo the precise moment where the magnet just passed this point i can make the the rotor turn faster now if i leave the magnet all the all the time under the, the it, you can see how it slows down and it, so it's not perfect to make a motor you have to have something that alternates scientists have came up with different methods to bring to life two magnetic field without using magnets one emanating from the stator and one from the rotor in this new configuration the stator is the fixed part and is made of opposing pair of wired coils when an alternating current is sent to both poles because of the way they are wired one become positive and the other one negative when the current alternate again, both poles switch polarity. The one that was positive becomes negative and the one that was negative becomes positive. This is the part where using direct current, DC, won't work. You absolutely need AC, alternate current. Let's recap. A first magnetic field is created from the voltage running through the coils of wires creating poles opposing each other inside the stator. The current is alternating which means poles are alternating as well and the magnetic field is therefore rotating inside the stator. This rotating magnetic field interacts with the rotor which is made of highly conductive copper. This phenomenon is also called induction, basically magic. The first rotating magnetic field out of the stator induces the rotor to generate another magnetic field. This is possible because copper is a highly conductive material. Therefore, this new magnetic field which is created around the rotor interacts with the first magnetic field to create a rotation of the rotor exactly like having two magnets therefore the wheels rotate as well when you press on the speed pedal the inverter sends more voltage meaning more current into the stator Therefore, the magnetic field out of the stator is much stronger. That induces a strong magnetic field in the rotor as well. 
As long as the magnetic field in the rotor is weaker than the one from the stator, the rotor turns in the same direction as the rotating magnetic field and therefore turns the wheel forward. When you release the speed pedal, the current sent to the stator is lowered. But since the wheels are still turning, you know, since nobody pressed on the brakes pedal, the rotor is now turning independently of the rotating magnetic field from the stator. When the rotor starts turning faster than the rotating magnetic field out of the stator, now everything works backward. The initial rotating magnetic field is now trying to slow down the rotor, therefore the current in the stator is forced to flow in the opposite direction and can be stored back in the battery. This phenomenon is also called regenerative braking. A lot of people are asking, out of curiosity I guess, why is that Tesla is not using a DC motor? DC meaning direct current motor. Well, while studying both designs, I can tell, and as you may have heard, that the main argument is DC motor need maintenance, while AC motor don't. In fact, it's true. Because one part, small part, from the conventional DC motor literally wears out and need to be replaced. It's called brush and they are used to send electricity to a rotating shaft. Imagine if you wanted to plug a conventional wire since the rotor is endlessly rotating. The wire would lock and break. So a pair of brushes will be used for that purpose. They rub the shaft and make perfect contact to send a flow of electricity. With time though, they wear out because of all the rubbing business and you literally need to take the motor out of the car, break it into pieces, replace the brushes and put everything back together. Not too long ago, an alternative was created where they switched the electricity from rotor to the stator and the rare earth magnet from the stator to the rotor. They were using powerful rare earth magnet at the time. But while this application was finally getting less expensive to maintain, because of the popularity of electric motors and other applications where rare earth magnet was used, earth magnet was and is still becoming more and more expensive. So even though the wiring issue on the DC motor was solved, there was another major problem. Which AC motors solved successfully by getting rid of expensive materials and maintenance. I'll thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed. Whether you're looking to buy or to be entertained by nice car footage, I suggest you subscribe and scroll to the channel. There are many things which discusses many cars. Thank you, take care and goodbye.